So decoding. Topics covered, the decoding algorithm and the properties of convolutional codes. The last two sections we'll be covering in Chapter 7. So we saw here the block diagram. We're looking now at the convolutional decoder. How is it that we take this information that was transmitted during the additive white Gaussian noise channel? Some bits in the code words were flipped, and I have to figure out from there how to correct the errors. The first part is here where I do the demodulation and I feed information to the convolution decoder. First part to discuss is at that link there because we have two choices. We can do what is called hard decisions or we can transfer what are called soft decisions. So I go from modulation, from this box, demodulate, into the box which says decode, and in this transition, what kind of information am I transferring from the demodulator to the decoder? Hard decisions means that the decisions come from a finite set. In the terms of binary, it's either a zero, logical zero or logical one, or if it's BPSK I was using, it's minus one or plus one. Um, there's no information about how confident I am in that decision. The demodulator says I compare it to my threshold and it's positive, so I think it's logical one, or it's negative, I think it's logical zero, and, and it just gives a result. Soft decisions are different. Soft decisions come from uh, a continuity. It can be any values. So even though it's binary data, the soft decision could be something like 0.3 or minus 0.9. And now, now we're keeping information from the decoded, the demodulation part about how much confidence they have in the decision. So a couple things. First of all, which one is going to have better performance? Well, soft decisions are going to have better performance for sure because it's not just the decision itself, but information about the confidence in the decision. Yeah, sure, this is better. Which one is going to be more complex? Oh, soft decisions are going to be more complex. I can't just work on a finite set of values. I have to start working on continuous ones. So this is more complex, but higher performance. So we're going to stick in this chapter 7 to examples from hard decisions. And we'll talk a little bit about soft decisions and maybe see some examples uh, later on. But both exist. So let's look at um, this idea of hard and soft decisions. If I look at the binary transitions, for instance, if I do a hard decision, then basically at the intersection of the two conditional probabilities, here's the probability of the received uh, signal based on a, on a 1 being transmitted. So here's the average value for 1. And then there's the variance, which is determined by the noise level. Here is the uh, conditional probability if a, uh, the second symbol, in this case a logical 0, is transmitted. And in that case, here's the mean. And where these two intersect, that becomes my threshold. And if my received signal is to the right, I will send a 1 to the decoder. If it's to the left, I'll send a 0. Now let's suppose that instead I'm doing soft decisions. Well, it's a soft decision, but I'm still going to quantize the soft decision. So for instance, I can get a 3-bit quantization of the soft decision. That means that I'm going to divide the received signal, instead of even the 0.3 and the 0.9, I'm going to give you 3 bits that tells you which bin it fell in. And the you know, closest bins with the most noise will be these two. And as we get over, that will represent uh, less likely states where there were larger amounts of noise. But in any case, I, I'm mentioning this because when you read about soft decision decoders, they will generally specify the number of bits of resolution in the soft decision. And you'll find that 3-bit um, uh, soft decision is usually more than adequate to get the advantage of soft versus hard decision. So you don't want to increase the complexity too much, and there's no point in, in making it truly continuous, all values, that you can quantize it and, and still get all the, virtually all the improvement you would get in moving from a hard to a soft decision. Because we have two uh, kinds of information which are trans, uh, transmitted from the demodulator into the decoder, that means that the decoder has two different kinds of metrics that it's going to be using, depending on whether it's dealing with hard decisions or whether it's dealing in soft decisions. As I said, we're going to be looking at hard decisions. 
And when we work with hard decisions, we're going to be talking about the hamming distance between a perceived word and the code word that it might have been. So this code word that has no errors in it, there are only a few code words which are allowed by the code, and this is the received vector, and of course things could have been flipped by noise. Uh, so we want to see how close is what we receive to each one of the possible uh, code words, for instance. Uh, Hamming distance, what does that mean? Well, in the Hamming distance, the code word is binary, and I got hard decisions, so this is binary also. And so if I'm looking at a sequence, the distance between the two sequences is just the number of bits which are different. Now, Euclidean distance is what I use in the case of continuous um, decisions. So this is for soft decisions. And now I have uh, a sequence, and you can think of them as like, um, I would say IQ coordinates, but let's say we're doing binary. So I have this line. Here's 0. Uh, here's 1. Let's say it's a BPSK. It's just easier. Here's my my threshold, and if the hard, it would be like one or the other. Here, it's actually some point here on the real line that it's represented. Um, it could be in the IQ plane if it wasn't binary, so we give a nice general equation here, which could be used also uh, for a, a two-dimensional um, uh, representation of the symbol. But in any case, for soft decisions, what I do is I use something called the Euclidean distance. And the Euclidean distance between these two is I take the distance um, between uh, the true one and the, and the, for instance, if this was what was received, this would be the distance between the received signal and the potential correct word. Um, and then we would square that and we would do the sum of the squares of all the differences and then we would take the square root and that would be the Euclidean distance. So two metrics, we can see why this would be more complex to calculate and this is uh, you know, the, the reason that the soft decision is more complex uh, and this is much easier uh, to implement. If we want to look back into um, the probabilistic framework that we built for channels for additive white Gaussian noise. If we're uh, looking at hard decisions, it's like taking this idea of uh, the received signal being the, excuse me, the transmitted signal plus noise. That idea and that, you know, this is Gaussian. Uh, instead, what I'm doing is I've already made the decision I quantized this after I compared it to a threshold. And in that case, this whole representation could be based on let P be the probability that I mistake a, a 0 for a 1. So 1 was sent, but I think it's a 0. And I'll assume that this is equal to the same probability that, you know, 1 was, I, I, I pick a 1 even though it's 0. So two types of errors, assume the two types of errors have the same probability, which I call P. So this would be what we call a binary symmetric channel. So there's 0 or 1 is possibility of what's transmitted. There's a certain probability that I will make a mistake. I call that P. And of course, if I don't, the opposite would be the probability I don't make a mistake. That's 1 minus P. And so this would be, uh, I would just come up with the probability of error. And once I've determined the probability of error, then I just represent the whole uh, channel by this simple transition of a binary symmetric channel. So it just uh, takes it from here for a given uh, bit error rate, or excuse me, a different uh, specific signal to noise ratio, I get a bit error rate, and then that just comes in here, and that represents what's going on uh, for my performance with the encoder.